Having some great tools to help you with your loose leash walking training is only going to make things better. And today I want to help you with a tool that is going to do just that. There are three moments in your leash walking training that could have you failing and struggling before you've even gotten started. My goal with the tool that we're going to give you today is to help keep your walks wonderful and stop the pulling, stop all the frustration, stop your dogs getting distracted by other things out there in the world as well. I bet you're wondering what the tool is that I keep talking about. And the tool that's going to help you with all of your distraction training, I like to call the distraction ladder. And basically that ladder is something that is going to be individual for you and your dog. And something that's really important to understand when you apply the ladder to your loose leash walking, for example, you might be taking several steps up the ladder and doing great, but then you might have to reassess and take a few steps down the ladder when things change in the environment. Let's get a little bit deeper into this. The big mistake that a lot of people make is expecting that the distraction work starts when they're already out there on the walk. And I will tell you that the first time that you're going to use your distraction ladder is before you even step out the front door with your dog. Before I even open the front door and walk outside, I'm going to make sure that I can get my dog's focus on me, that I can have him sit calmly at my side, and that he's not in that high energy state that I know I'm going to lose them the second there's a slight distraction. Then when I step out onto the front porch, I can do the same thing. I can work some simple tricks with my dog. I can work a sit at my side. I can work a little bit of focus. And I know from there, if I can get those simple behaviors from my dog, I have a much better chance of retaining his focus when I'm out there and the distractions do start piling on. The last thing I wanna do is end up in a situation where I'm frustrated and having to fight with my dog just to get his attention. Taking steps back down means taking a step back in your training. If I know that my dog's attention is not on me in this situation, then I know that the more distractions I add, the tougher it's going to be for him. So we want you to have success, which means you might have to take a step back inside the house, work on that focus, work on that attention, and then after a couple of minutes of success there, take a step back out and see how things go again on that next rung of the ladder. Something really important to remember with your distraction ladder is if you don't get a win, your walk can't begin. But if you're all the way at the top of the ladder in this location, come with me, you're ready for the next step. It's really important to set up a ladder that is going to be successful for you. So for me, I'm going to move from the front of my house to the back of my house, and I'm going to make sure that I can get the same quality performance and attention from my dog in this location before I take a step up to that next rung of the ladder. Maybe you live in an apartment. Your situation is going to be a little bit different, and your ladder is going to look a little different. Maybe you live in a townhouse. In those scenarios, maybe you're using the hallway in the apartment or the parking lot in the townhouse complex so that you can build a ladder that makes sense for you using the tools that are at your disposal. One of the bigger mistakes that people make is expecting their dog to do finished product perfection right off the bat. And I'll tell you for a fact that that is going to set you up to be frustrated and feel a little bit anxious about your training with your dog. And your ladder might be completely different than mine. Everybody's dog is going to be a little bit different. But what I want to do is make sure that I'm not headed straight out from the front door to the sidewalk where things might end up crashing and burning for me. Now, depending on where you live, your weather might be like ours, where every day looks a little bit different. Yesterday, we had some snow on the ground. Today, we've got sunshine out. We never really know what we're gonna get. And trust me when I say the change in seasons and the change in temperatures makes a huge difference to a young dog the smells that they're going to be exposed to, the sights that they're gonna be exposed to, all of those things are gonna challenge their understanding of skills. So before I make things more difficult for my dog, I wanna make sure that I can get engagement, I can get focus in a familiar location. So this is my backyard, I'm working with my young dog here, and I wanna make sure that I can get her attention, I can call her name, I can work a sit at my side. I might pull out a toy and do some play with her, we might work on some tricks. Basically, my goal is to make sure that I can get engagement and some focus before I move out there and make the distractions really challenging for her. Lucy's having some challenges with the rabbit poo in the yard here. So we're just working through. All I'm going to do is keep helping her get back into that sit. If she gets up, I'm just going to place her back, use my leash, then loosen up again. Once she's sitting on a nice loose lead, that's when I can say yes and I can follow through with my rewards. What a good girl. Good choice, Luce. Yes. Very nice. And the reinforcement starts to build more value for focusing on me than for worrying about trying to eat the rabbit poo on the ground. If your dog breaks a sit or makes any mistake, don't worry about it. Don't get frustrated. Just give them good, clean information. Help them be right. And then 
make a decision on your distraction ladder as well if you're ready to move up to the next rung or if you need to keep working at that same level to make sure that you build in enough success and enough value that you're going to have an easier time once you do start building distractions. I was a bit surprised by the fact that there's a lot of bunny poo out in my yard today. I wasn't really expecting that. You might not know or know to expect the distractions you're going to contend with that day. What's important is that you give your dog good, clear information of what you're asking them to do and what they need to do in that moment versus just allowing them to do their own thing and sniff the bunny poo. Now, Lucy's doing great after a couple of quick reminders of me asking her to sit, and now she's learned some valuable information. She needs to pay attention to me, even when there's something really tempting in the environment like bunny poo. The next step in your loose lead walking training has to be starting to get out to different locations and challenge your dog's understanding of the skill that you're trying to teach. Now, always remember in your ladder that there is room for you to take a step up and down. So if I've mastered my loose lead walking plan at home and in the backyard, my dog's doing great and I've hit the top of that ladder, now it's time to get out somewhere else but know that you're probably going to have to take a step down the ladder. You might even have to start right at the bottom of the ladder with really easy stuff like sitting at your side, looking for attention, and then you might even have to reassess that again as time goes on because my environment is not within my control. Life is full of surprises and you may have a surprise of some, some distraction you weren't expecting. At that point, it's going to be up to you to adjust your ladder and make things easier for your dog. I might have to, if there's people that are distracting for my dog, I might have to step off the path and have my dog sit and just observe them. Or I might have to ask those people to remain at a distance because my dog is just not ready for that distraction yet. We actually have a great video that dives really deep into this exact topic. So if you'd like some help with that, click this card. Things might happen. I might suddenly come across a bunny or I might run into some other people in the park that have dogs as well. I might need to change my plan. And the messy part of dog training, it's okay to assess and change things. It's okay to think about things critically, like maybe I need to be walking at a different time of day where there's not as much going on, or maybe I'm not quite ready for this location. It's a little bit too challenging in its novelty for my dog. Maybe I need to make things a little bit easier somehow and take a step down that ladder so that I can continue to rack up those wins. One of the important tools that you'll need is a bait pouch and some way of getting food delivered to your dog quickly. Check out the amazing bait pouches that we have at McCannDogs.store. Maybe you reassess your ladder completely and you end up changing your plans, having a seat on a bench somewhere and enjoying some time just sitting and relaxing with your dog, letting them take in the sights and sounds of that park. I want to help you build your distraction ladder, so I have created a downloadable document that you can use to build out your training plan. Click the link in the description below to download yours now. Now that you know how to master loose leash walking, where it's time to give you some skills to do so. Click this card. And on that note, I'm Instructor Shannon. Happy training! Now that you know how to master your loose leash walking, here's a video that'll help you with the skill. And on that note, I'm Instructor Shannon. Happy training.